Hi. <laughs> Hi everyone, thank you guys so much for being here. Yay, we're trying something new with our screen. So there's two images of me and I'm trying not to get distracted. Um, hi, thank you guys so much for being here. I am so excited for this Q&A. Um, uh, as you guys know, we've sort of slowed down our YouTube episodes, the pace of them, because we didn't want to run out of content for you guys and we really haven't been able to shoot any content because we've been um, in isolation. Um, and so we've slowed everything down. I think we have two episodes left. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to um, start filming some more episodes because I am actually back up in Canada. We left for two weeks, um, but we're back up in Canada. We've got 10 11 days left of our isolation where we aren't allowed to do anything. And then as soon as we can go outside, we're going to start filming some episodes again. So yay. Um, welcome. Thank you guys. <laughs> um, I love this. I'm waiting for everyone to sort of show up, but thank you guys so much for being here. Um, I, again, I'm really excited to be connecting with you. I know that we haven't done a live Q&A for a few weeks. Um, it's been a little crazy. What what happened? Well, Robin and I managed to um, go home to Los Angeles for a couple weeks. Um, we have been given the like go ahead to start filming up again uh, here in Canada. And we knew we, we had like a, a month to do that. And so we decided to go home really quick. Um, I had uh, some doctor's appointments and things like that, but also our house is under construction. So it was nice to sort of see the house because we've been gone for <laughs> three months. Um, and um, so we got home and then we actually drove back again. So we literally drove to Los Angeles, stayed home for a week and a half and drove back. And now we're in Canada um, again. So um, hi, and thank you guys for being here. I really appreciate that. Um, so I am going to just start answering some questions. Um, so let's see, Germany, hi. I don't even know what time it is in Germany right now. It's like eight hours ahead, so it's probably, well, that would be 8 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> Nailed it. Thanks, babe. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. Um, so, um, every, people keep mentioning this cinnamon challenge to me. Um, and will you do the cinnamon challenge? And, I, you know, I don't really know what it is, but I think it has something to do with like eating as much cinnamon as you possibly can at one time, which to me, you know, my challenge is... I think it's just a tablespoon. I is it just, just a, a tablespoon? I think it's just you're supposed to get down a tablespoon. Yeah. Of is that right? It's got to be right. It's sort of like back in the day when we were kids and you tried to eat as many saltine crackers as you could at once and you couldn't it like took all the water out of your mouth and you like like legit couldn't swallow anymore. Um, so no, I don't like to do challenges that I know are going to hurt me. I mean, there's it, to me, it's, there's a very big difference between doing physical challenges on my body um, that sort of pertain to like physical fitness and then doing like, you know, challenges just to punish myself with cinnamon seem really <laughs> crazy. And I don't want to lose my love of cinnamon. I absolutely adore cinnamon. If you guys watched the What I Eat in a Day, I eat a lot of cinnamon and I absolutely love it. Um, and God forbid eating a tablespoon of cinnamon at, at once would make me not like cinnamon anymore. That would be really tragic. Yes, yeah, see, someone just said, I thought cinnamon was dangerous if you eat too much of it. Yeah, I don't know. It's, I, that, it's that Ceylon cinnamon versus regular oh, cinnamon thing. So here's a really cool thing. So many people mentioned this to me, that Ceylon, and I might be pronouncing that differently, but the Ceylon cinnamon versus like, um, like table cinnamon that you buy at the grocery store. Um, there's a big difference. One is like the one that you want that's really healthy for you and the other one. I didn't know that. So I'm actually going to look into that. I mean, you did a little bit as far mm -hmm. as like that it's the Ceylon one that's good for you. So, um, yeah. See, people are saying it's dangerous. Yeah. Don't do anything that's dangerous. Yeah, the non-Ceylon just... has like some kind of chemical or poison in it if you take it in high doses. It's like Tide Pods. <laughs> what? Please don't eat Tide Pods. Um... 
Um, so that's that one. Um, okay. Will I be coming back to the flash as Amunet? I hope so. I hope so. Um, I, um, I love being on the flash and, and the way that I sort of see Amunet is that as long as she doesn't die, I think she can always come back. So, um, you never know. Hopefully they'll have her back. So, <laughs> um, hi, hi, hi. Oh, what shoes do I wear when I run? This is actually really cool. So, um, you guys, I have gone through so many like um, different types of shoes, trying to find the best thing that for me for running. And um, the crazy thing was when I was about 16 years old, I hurt my knees really bad. And that's what ended my swimming career, I've, if you guys follow along. Um, what happened when I, was I went to the doctor and they put me in orthotics. So when I was 16 years old, they put me in like this hard plastic orthotic that I stayed in for my whole life. Like, honestly, I, I still have those. They're upstairs now. Um, it's a it, it, it's basically a hard orthotic that held my foot in place to help my knees. Um, and what that did was it took away all the strength in my foot it, to me. This is what I think happened. I'm not a doctor, obviously, but um, and then I started getting all of this massive foot pain. And I think it was because I had inadvertently gotten rid of all the muscle in my feet because I'd been wearing these orthotics for so many years. Um, so, um, I, over the last two years, well, actually it started before that I started taking ballet classes to strengthen my feet and a lot of my foot pain started to go away. And so then the next step for me was to get rid of the orthotics and go into a lower drop shoe. Now for anyone that runs a lot, you'll probably know that the drop is the distance between the bottom of the ground and where your foot sits inside of the shoe. Okay. So, um, right. That's the, the distance for the heel from the toe. Oh, it's the distance from the heel to the toe. So a zero drop shoe means that your, your toes and your heel are on the same plane. So you slowly go up the more you put under the back of the heel, right? So for me having an orthotic and then putting an orthotic inside of a running shoe made my drop like 12 which was crazy. It's basically like running in clogs um, that much distance between my foot and, and my toe and then my foot. So over, this is a long winded question. So sorry guys. Um, so what I started to do was slowly um, remove the drop of my shoes and um, see how my foot adapted to that. And what I ended up uh, getting into at that point was a Saucony shoe, which has a four millimeter drop. And then I take out the insole and I put a smart foot, smart super, feet, super, super feet. feet, a super feet orthotic inside of that as a slow transition from my old orthotic. Such a long winded answer to I run in Sauconies. <laughs> Sorry, that was like the <laughs> longest answer to I run in Sauconies. Sorry. <laughs> Um, someone just said Vancouver seems nice that they'd like to visit here someday. You guys, if you haven't been to Vancouver, Canada, it is absolutely gorgeous. Um, I have had the luxury to work in Canada multiple times over my career, so many times that there was one time about eight years ago or six years ago that I came into Canada and the guy at customs said, um, are you traveling on your American visa? And I was like, well, yeah, of course. I, yeah. And he was like, okay, well, did you leave on your Canadian visa? And I was like, what are you talking about? He thought I was Canadian <laughs> because I've been up in Canada my entire career. Um, the first series I ever shot here, I was 19 years old and it was called The Fearing Mind and that shot in Vancouver. So that was in 1998, 99. I saw this city changed so much from that moment. And then I came back for the movie Halloween Resurrection. Um, then I came back for Battlestar Galactica. And then I actually didn't come back to Canada for like a good seven years. And now I'm back here for another life. So um, I love Vancouver. If you've never been here, you should absolutely visit. Um, uh, if you cannot leave the United States right now, 
<laughs> because Americans are not allowed in Canada. Um, you can go to like Portland or Seattle. If you've never been to the Northwest, um, uh, the Northwest, that whole area of Portland, Seattle, all the way up to Vancouver on that side of the Pacific coast looks very, very similar and it's absolutely gorgeous. So, and someone just asked, is filming in Canada cheaper or something? Absolutely it is. So there, there are a couple things that come into play when filming in Canada. One of the things is the Canadian versus US dollar. I don't know what it is right now, but when I first started coming here in 1998 to film, the dollar was like 50 cents on the dollar. So that was a huge change um, if you were coming with US money. The second one is that um, Vancouver specifically, but Canada also gives what's called a tax credit. So what they're trying to do is pull productions into Canada because it's been proven that for every dollar productions spend or uh, for every dollar of tax credits given, the production puts six dollars back into the economy. Um, now, this is this was a, a study that was done in New Orleans and Louisiana to prove that. But I would imagine that it's very similar that for every dollar of tax credits that's given, six dollars is injected back into the economy. So it's actually really a great thing for film productions to be filming in Canada. And, you know, if your state, you know, um, was to get the film industry, they would probably have to give a tax credit because um, it gives you money back basically to film in a place. Um, so, um, the top one, do you still go back to the freezer place that you and Trisha went to in LA? I want to try it. Um, so for those of you that missed that episode, I did, um, an episode about cryotherapy with Trisha Helfer. Um, and I loved it. But then we came up to Canada and then got into quarantine and then I hadn't been back. But when we were in Los Angeles, we went again. And um, for whatever you think about cryotherapy, whether you think that it's like a placebo or you don't agree with it or for whatever reason, I had, an, I had terrible, terrible, terrible cramps. Um, um, one day, sorry guys, we're gonna, we, we have never gone through a Q and A or anything without anything. me talking about my period. So we're going to talk about my period. Um, I had terrible cramps. They were absolutely awful. And we went to, um, cryotherapy and my cramps went away a hundred percent. They were gone and they didn't come back for about three hours. Um, which to me is really, um, a beautiful thing. I, I, you know, that gave me, um, natural relief from my cramps, which normally I would have to take like three Advil. Um, they went away for, uh, you know, three to four hours. And when they came back, they weren't as severe and I didn't have to take any, uh, pain meds that day. So for me, um, that just sort of solidifies that it works. Um, and I will absolutely be going back to cryotherapy again. I would suggest that you try it. Um, and all the things that I've seen bad about it, like the people freezing their feet and all of that stuff is because they wore socks that were like cold or wet. You're not supposed to have any wet on your body. So um, make sure that you take off wet underwear if you just went and worked out. Make sure you take off wet socks if you just went and worked out. Like anything that's like wet is going to freeze. And they're, so, they're really good at making sure you're safe. Yeah, they're really good about that. So um, there you go. You should uh, at the top tell them that episode idea that we had with the true ghost. Um, oh, are you going to do an episode where you get a massage? 100%. So one of the episodes that is in the works right now is how to learn how to do a couple's massage. Um, and we're going to do that with Michael Truco and his wife, Sandra. That was the plan anyway. <laughs> um, and we'll probably still do that episode. But one of the cool things when you have um, a partner or you have roommates at home or you live at home with your family, one of the coolest things is that you can actually learn how to... Um, to give each other massages. You know, massages are incredibly expensive, especially if someone comes to your house. So um, one of the things that we wanted to do was highlight all the little things that you can learn how to do to give your partner a massage and save some money, which is great. Um, so we actually bought a massage table for like $200 on Amazon. It was a used one. Um, and we bought a massage table. So, cause it's so much easier to give a person a massage when they're lifted up and their head is like, um, through a table, obviously. So, uh, the next question. It's just a shout out. 
Oh, today's my wife's birthday. We're huge BSG fans. Can you please give a shout out to Yvonne? Um, um, <laughs> so I would say your name, but it's, so this guy's name is Dickum and Lickum. <laughs> I, did, I didn't read that before I passed it to you. <laughs> uh, my bad. You're a lucky woman, Yvonne. You're a lucky woman. <laughs> Yvonne, your husband seems like he's the class. <laughs> I can't stop that. I thought it was like, I thought it was like a name. Like, um, because so many times I get like foreign, like a name from another country that I can't pronounce. <laughs> and so I was like really wanting to make sure Swedish? Is like Swedish? <laughs> I thought he was like Swedish I wanted to really make sure <laughs> that <laughs> that like I pronounced it the right way so I was like oh Dickum his name is Dickum and Lickum <laughs> <laughs> okay uh. oh my gosh you guys that was so funny I'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> like, if you're going to give yourself a funny name on YouTube, you might as well make it really funny. Um, and, and yes, slightly inappropriate, but also not wildly inappropriate. So, um, <laughs> sorry. Oh, someone just asked, um, have I tried Eastern medicine like cupping? So, um, <clears throat> I'm a huge fan of cupping. For those of you guys that don't know what cupping is, um, I'm going to explain it. I'm probably going to explain it wrong um so you can just um google cupping afterwards but <laughs> the main idea is that um they put oil on your back and flip over glass jars and the new ones have a gun that sucks the air out of them the old ones they would take a little piece of cotton and a match and they would actually light that cotton on fire and close the jar really quick and it sucked all the oxygen out of the jar and what would happen is your skin would get pulled into the cup on your back. And the idea being that it increases blood flow to, to certain parts of the body and that it can relieve inflammation. Um, yeah, it also pulls the muscle off of it, the skeleton as well a little bit, which helps. Robin just said that it pulls the muscle off the skeleton, which actually helps as well. Um, I have loved cupping for many, many years. I had a horrible back injury when I was shooting a movie um, and I had what was called fissure tears all the way up my spine um, and I was going into filming Riddick and so for Riddick I had to train really really hard and I couldn't even like bend over to put my um, my underwear on so um, it, it, I was in a lot of severe pain and I didn't know what to do one of the things that I did during that time was cupping um, and that helped a lot. One of the main things I did was um, I uh, am friends with a, 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 a guy named John Wellborn who played football for many, many years. And John recommended this place in Arizona that I went to. Um, and they actually spun blood platelets. They, they and injected ozone into my back. So that was highly awful. Um, it was called, it's what they call needling, but so they needled my back and they put a needle in and they move it around and break up tissue and then inject ozone into your back. It was awful. It was awful. It was the worst experience of my life. It worked though. And I went back twice and then I, uh, my back pain went away. So, um, awesome. Someone asked what attracted me to girl flu. Um, that's a great question. For, for those of you who have never seen the movie Girl Flu, it was this movie that I did um, years ago. Um, and um, it was with an actress, one of the actress from Pretty Little Fires Everywhere, uh, Jade Pettyjohn, um, who played my daughter. And it was all about a mother sort of having to grow up and um, take responsibility for herself and her actions. And, and um, she was more of the child in the relationship with this daughter. She's a single mom and, and it was all about the mistakes that she makes. And um, But what I loved about it was I loved the, um, I loved the story at its core. Um, Dory Barton wrote that, she's amazing. Um, 
And it was a dark comedy um, about a mom, a coming of age story for a mother. Um, and it, to me, was so funny and so um, beautifully um, written um, and honest. And um, the character was so flawed. And yes, Jeremy's sister was in it. Um, and I absolutely loved that movie. It was, uh, to me, one of the best experiences that I've had as an actress. Um, and, um, they, I love the fact that they, um, that they trusted me to do comedy, which was really fun. So yeah, loved it. Um, um, <laughs> um, so next question. Okay. Um, please, we need to know if there's going to be a Longmire continuation. Um, so you guys know, sadly, not anytime soon. Um, you know, Longmire came to an end. A lot of people have this misconception that Longmire was canceled. Um, Longmire technically wasn't canceled. We actually had an entire run of contract, which means, you know, when we sign contracts as actors, there's a certain amount of time that our contract lasts. Our contract for Longmire was seven years or seven seasons, whatever came first. So for us on Longmire, um, seven years came before seven seasons. That's why um, that's why we only got six seasons because of the change from A and E to Netflix. Um, that being said, um, you know, if at some point um, they uh, they choose to do a Longmire movie, um, we would all be on board because I know that the cast um, and the producers and um, really, really wanted to do movies and Warner Brothers didn't want to do that. So um, as soon as Warner Brothers doesn't have the rights anymore, I would imagine that whoever does have the rights to that could go and make Longmire movies if they wanted to. So, um, do you take any supplements or eat any meal replacement bars? Um, so, um, this is one of those questions that comes from all the training videos that I've done and the what I eat in a day videos. Um, so I do take some supplements, um, but they, um, I take some, when I'm training really hard, I do take some BCAAs, um, and those are amino acids that help your body hold on to muscle and also not lose the muscle that it has and gain more muscle. So, um, I do take BCAAs, um, I'm not taking them right now, but I, um, I will put those back into my diet as soon as um, I start training again hard. And the main reason for me to take them was during, during filming of Another Life, I don't have the ability to work out as much as I would want to, to maintain the muscle that I already have. So I actually will take the BCAAs to hold on to the muscle that I do have. Um, and then meal replacement bars, I do eat a lot of meal replacement bars. Um, a couple reasons. One, for me, they're so convenient um, and they're really easy for me to stay on a, a certain calorie count when I need to. And a lot of times throughout the day, I'm really not that hungry for like a whole meal or something like that. So I do eat meal replacement bars. Um, my favorite bars, they're right here. They're actually Quest bars. I absolutely love Quest. Um, I am friends with uh, Lisa Bailu and her husband, Tom, who created Quest. Um, and I love the um, sort of the story behind it and why the, the company was created and um, the uh, philanthropic aspect of that company and giving back to people. So I love Quest bars. Um, what else? What else do I take as supplements? Um, I think that's all I take. Um, sometimes I take um, and I put... Um, um, what's it called? Mm, collagen. Collagen. Thank you, baby. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> um, I do put collagen um, in my protein shakes when I have a protein shake or a meal replacement shake. Um, I try not to um, have what I a protein powder that has protein in it and is more of a meal replacement because I think so many times we consume way too much protein and we don't need that much protein. Um, so I really look for meal replacement bars and shakes that have um, a really nice balance of um, macros. It's really easy to eat too much protein when you eat protein bars. 
Yeah, that's true. Robin said it's really easy to eat too much protein when you eat protein bars. So um, you should watch that. Make sure you um, calculate how much protein your body should be getting maximum a day. Um, so have you worked with anyone that you grew up watching on TV or met anyone you've been starstruck by? So um, no, I don't really get starstruck. I don't know why. Um, but one of the coolest experiences of my life. So when I was 14 years old, I might have been 13, I went down to be a background actor in Mr. Holland's Opus. Mr. Holland's Opus was a movie that shot in my hometown of Portland, um, and it was starring Richard Dreyfuss. Um, I came in for one day uh, to be a background performer, and what I realized is that so many background performers are, um, it's so clicky. It was just like high school. Um, you know, a lot of these kids had been there for the entire movie and I only came in one day. Um, and I felt very like, I don't know, like bored and sort of like, you know, um, lonely. And so I was eating lunch by myself outside on the steps and Richard Dreyfus actually walked by me and he said, why so glum or something like that? And and I was like, well, you know, it's really not for me, I don't think. And, you know, I don't think I'm going to do this background thing again. And and he was like, well, that's great. And he said, what do you want to do someday? And I said, well, someday I'll, pr I'll, I'll work with you again. I promise you I'll work with you again. And he was like, I'll be I'll be looking out for you. And I think so that was 94. In 2000, I was hired to play his daughter on a TV show uh, called The Education of Max Bickford, which was a TV show with Eli Wallach and Peter O'Toole and Richard Dreyfuss and Marsha Gay Harden and Ann Johnson. Like the list goes on and on and on of these phenomenal actors. Um, um, and um, yeah, I got to work with Richard again. And I remember telling that story and he was like, I don't remember it. It's totally fine. He didn't need to remember it. But um, I remember being 19 and going in to audition for this and everyone just being like, it's Richard Dreyfuss, like, you know, all these movies and Oscars and like, you know, all of this stuff. And, and they were like, how did you not get uh, starstruck? And um, I learned a little trick back then and I, I didn't even realize I was doing it. Um, but what I do is that if I walk into a situation with a person or um, an event or something like that, that is daunting to me or that I'm scared of, I try to put the person down on my level of something that I think is um, attainable or not um, intimidating. And so for me with Richard Dreyfuss, it was like, you know, I didn't want to think that this is the guy that's won Oscars. And so all I, I, I said to myself is this is a guy that did a movie with a mechanical shark. <laughs> so I, I was like, this is the guy that did a movie with a mechanical shark. And I have seen that shark at Universal Studios. And, you know, it like brought him down to something that like felt like, um, relatable to me instead of like, this guy's won an Oscar. Um, and so, um, I wasn't intimidated working with him. Um, um, how many days of stretch training do you do in a week versus cardio? Are you afraid of losing too much muscle with cardio? Strength training. Strength training. Sorry. So, um, I strength train, I would say, even if it's only like a 15 minute session before work, like at 430 in the morning, I will, um, strength train at least three days a week, if not five days a week. Um, and that is not necessarily heavy. I'm not necessarily lifting heavy. You guys should actually go, if you if you haven't, go watch that episode that I did with Steve Zim, um, because how I train my body um, to get in shape. Because you'll see that I'm not lifting heavy, but I am lifting. So um, I will lift anywhere from three to five days. And here's the thing with cardio, and I think a lot of people don't realize this. Muscle burns fat. So if you don't have a lot of muscle on your body, you're not gonna be burning fat. Your, your body's like an engine, and the more muscle you have, the faster that metabolism goes. If you don't lift weights and you just do cardio, when you're doing that cardio, your body eats muscle. Um, and so um, Robin can explain this better than I can, but if you're only doing cardio, your body's using your muscle as fuel and you're, you're, you're getting rid of that muscle. And then what you're actually, actually inadvertently doing 
is you're slowing your metabolism down because you don't have as much muscle. So a lot of times when, if you're at a plateau and you're not losing weight, or if you're at a plateau and you don't see those muscles coming in and you're doing a lot of cardio, you may actually wanna consider cutting back that cardio, slowing down that cardio, and so it's not so intense, and picking up the weights because the more muscle you have, the faster your engine burns. So, so that's a really important lesson. Um, so I always notice if I start to get a little too thin, if I start to look a little too dinky, um, it's because I'm doing too much cardio, not enough weights. So um, to the subject of this Q&A, the wife loves the two videos, what I eat and how I train for rolls. What is the overall energy level on the daily diet and how does the workout fit into this diet regimen? Whew, okay, what is the overall energy level on the daily diet and how does the workout fit into the diet regimen? Like, how do you feel when you're on the diet? Do you feel like you have energy? Oh. And then where does, I'm, I'm assuming, where does your workout fit into the day in terms of your, your eating that day? Right, you okay. Before your workout, after? So um, for you guys that watch that episode, the main thing that happens is that I put myself into a caloric deficit. Um, what that means is that my body is um, expending more calories than I'm consuming, and therefore your body weight goes down and you lose fat. Um, so what I do in that time, if you've watched that episode, is I consume approximately 1,500 to 2,000 calories a day. Now my body naturally, just to stay alive, burns, what was it, 2,100 a day? Yours. No, 1750. Yeah, it's like 1750. 1750. So me, just living, burns 1750 calories a day. So if I'm consuming under 1750 calories a day without working out, I'm already in a, a caloric deficit. So um, what that means is that, am I gonna be a little tired? Am I gonna be a little sluggish? Potentially, but here's the thing. If I'm too tired, I know that I'm at way too low of a caloric deficit, and that is not where I want to exist. I do not want to exist in a place where I'm hangry, where my stomach starts to hurt because I'm so hungry, where I have no energy and I start to get brain fog. Those are all really big signs that you're not consuming enough food. Um, so I always will add more calories in, if I experience any of those uh, symptoms, those are just the the ones that like, those are just the ones that are the quickest that that you'll notice right away um, from a day to day basis. If you're not eating enough, um, there are much more severe side effects if you're not eating enough calories. So you really, really have to be careful that you are consuming enough calories to function. Um, and my workout typically fits into the morning. That is when I have most of my energy um, is in the morning. So I try to get my workouts in right away. I like everybody else lose motivation as I go throughout the day. So I really try to get those workouts in in the morning. Um, and then somebody asked me a question the other day, you know, do you ever get really, really tired at the end of the day? Um, yes, I do. To me, that tells you that you're not eating enough calories. Now, I'm not telling you to go eat a Big Mac to get your energy back up, but you know, you can eat an apple, give yourself a little bit of those natural sugars, give yourself um, a beef stick if you eat meat and you need a little bit of protein, um, a hard boiled egg, you can eat a bag of sugar snap peas with some hummus. Like, it doesn't have to be a lot of calories to get your energy level back up. I would say anything from like 200 to 250 calories will up that energy back up again and you'll have some more energy for the end of the day. Um, um, <laughs> I just came on and saw someone that said agreed Pizza Hut is better. <laughs> I think I missed part of that, but Pizza Hut is really good. Um, I wish I could eat dairy. Um, so how do you stay so motivated on a daily basis to keep up with your healthy habits, dealing with anxiety? So I'm just trying, but it's hard some days. <clears throat> it's hard some days. Like, I mean, I think that we all have bad days and I think that we all have days and especially during these quarantines that have become 
very clear and visible um, for me. Um, so it's not easy every day. And I'm not going to tell you that my energy level and my mental health haven't, you know, gone down. And, and it goes like this, right? Um, so I, I it, in order to motivate myself, there's a couple things. If I'm actually struggling and it feels like a mental health issue and I feel loneliness or sadness or any of those little signs that I could be dipping into a depression, I reach out to friends, I reach out to family, I make sure that I tell somebody that's how I feel so I can talk about it. The more I talk about that when I feel those feelings, the, the, the better I feel um, because I'm not hiding them or dealing with them myself. Um, now, as far as energy and motivation to work out, um, one of the one of the things that I do all the time is I sign myself up for something. Now, um, this may be kind of hard right now for you guys, um, but a lot of people I hear people say this to me all the time. Well, if I got paid to work out, I would do it too. Oh, I don't get paid to work out. Number one, <laughs> um, I choose to um, have a certain aesthetic for my characters and it's my choice. I've actually never, that's not true. One time I've been told to lose weight and that was when I was in my early 20s. Um, but I have never, since I started playing Starbuck, I have never been asked to lose weight. I've never been asked to do anything to my body, ever. Everything that I've done has been a choice that I've made because I thought that it fit the character the way that I envisioned the character. So, but what that does mean is that I had a goal, right? When somebody says, you're gonna be in Riddick, that's a very easy goal, right? Um, but something that was really cool, it's been two years since we finished filming the first season of Another Life to now, two years. Two years of me not really working, two years of me sort of living my life and not having to be on camera. So what I had to do during that time was pick something to do that motivated me to work out. <clears throat> what I picked was a Spartan race. Um, I picked something that <clears throat> was going to be challenging for me. I picked something that was also going to be fun and I decided to do it with another person, Robin. Um, and it would also keep me physically fit. Um, I wasn't watching what I was eating during that time. I was just working out to, to run the Spartan race. So what that did was it kept me sort of um, focused on my fitness and motivated because I had an end goal, right? So maybe you could pick like something that works for you. It doesn't even have to be hard, right? Like uh, maybe go sign up for a 5K and you don't even have to run that 5K. If running that 5K is too challenging for you, start out just finishing that 5K, right? So pick something that's challenging for you, sign up for it, spend that money to sign up for it, and then that goes leaps and bounds to helping you stay motivated to actually get you through some of those days where you're not motivated to work out. So, um, what are your favorite rock bands or workout songs that I jam to? Um, I love classic rock. Um, and I also love country. <laughs> Robin laughs. <laughs> when we first started dating, um, he wouldn't even listen to country. He was like, oh, hell no. Um, but now, you know, he actually sings along. He actually knows some of the songs, I've too. I've always sung along because anybody can sing along to country. It's the easiest music to sing along to. No, it's There's not. There's like 10 words total in each song. There's a hole in my bucket. And I'm going to drive my tractor. <laughs> That's basically a country song, you guys. You're welcome. <laughs> um, I sort of like started him like easy into country, like um, <clears throat> Chris Stapleton. That's an easy one. You just drop in a little, little Stapleton every once in a while because Chris Stapleton sounds so much like Bruce Spring, not so much like Bruce Springsteen, but there's- How dare you? I, Bruce is my favorite. Come on. But like there is this same sort of st uh, storyteller aspect to both of those guys. And you could play one song to the next and you'd be like, oh yeah, those maybe were written by the same person. Anyway. And Johnny Cash. <laughs> See? Yeah. I'm with him. 
<laughs> um, everybody's singing really funny country songs now. My dog died. My wife left. Why do we always have southern accents when we do them as well? Because well, it's traditionally southern. stereotypically. Um, <laughs> I love that everyone agrees with Robin. <laughs> um, um, yes. What is your routine? I missed that one. Where did it go? What was it? I don't know. It said something about what's my routine like when I'm waiting to be on camera. I don't see it. Um, so it says, flipped your, really fast. What's your weight maintenance plan when you're actually at your weight? My weight maintenance plan? Um, so my weight maintenance plan, when I actually get to my weight, you guys, is so much easier. Um, maintaining the weight that you're at is so much easier than losing weight. So um, when I am just maintaining, it's just a normal life. Um, I continue to not eat gluten um, because it just doesn't settle well with my stomach. I still don't eat dairy. Um, I try not to eat a ton of processed sugar and I try not to drink too much, but I'm probably consuming about 2,500 to 3,000 calories a day if I'm working out when I'm maintaining my body weight. So it's, it's a pretty manageable place to be at. Um, 2,500 to 3,000 calories is actually quite a bit of food um, if you count your calories. And if you've never counted your calories, you guys, um, I'm not saying that it's something that you should do, but it actually is really interesting to check back in with yourself and um, realize how many you are eating. There are so many calorie counting apps on your phone um, that, are, that make it so easy to track your calories from LifeSum to um, My Fitness Pal is great. Weight Watchers actually has a really great um, app as well. Like there are so many apps out there that help you count your calories. Now, I'm not telling you to do this all the time because I don't necessarily think that it's healthy unless it works for you. No, but um, everybody should do it at least. I think at least I think at least once. Everybody should at yeah, least one time I agree see too. what it is that they're eating. Because people, most people have no concept of how many calories and what the macros. Most they're people on. have no idea how many calories. One of the scariest things for me to do is to drive through a like a fast food place and when you look at the like oh yeah like i'll have a double whopper with cheese and a medium french fries like that's not that hard to eat i could probably eat like three of those a day that's like 1600 calories you guys that's like most of my calories for an entire day um, so if, if you're eating like that all the time and you don't realize how many calories are in food um, you know, that could play a big part into, um, you know, potential weight gain and not feeling very well. A lot of things have tons of sodium. So like you can track all of that stuff, which is really, really great to check in and actually, you know, um, get a wake up call sometimes how much you're consuming. There was this time <laughs> in California when I first moved out, um, I didn't know how to cook. And there was this place called Paquito Moss. And there, <laughs> it's like the most amazing um, Mexican restaurant in Los Angeles, but it's like fast food Mexican, right? So it's like, um, the burritos are like this big and they've got like queso and like chips. And so I would like go to the gym and work out. And then I would go to Paquito Moss and get like this big, um, burrito and chips. And I started like gaining weight and I didn't really realize what was going on. And then all of a sudden they put the calorie content of the burritos in the menu. Each one of those burritos was like 2,800 calories. Like I was like, like, that's crazy. I was like, holy shit. That's way too many calories. Oh my God. Like even just the tortilla had like 500 calories. It was crazy. I had no idea what, what calorie content was. And, and that's when I started like, you know, checking and, and actually paying attention. Um, yeah. Someone just said, is a 2300 calorie taco salad healthy? No. No, no, 2,300 calorie salad is not healthy at all. There's healthy parts of that salad, but no, not really. <laughs> um, so <clears throat> um, do you deprive yourself or water for maximum muscle tone? Is that healthy? So that's very interesting. Um, it's something that bodybuilders do a lot. 
fighters do it as well. What, what this person is asking is a lot of times in cutting weight, you are actually restricting your water consumption on that last couple days to really shrink, shrink yourself down, get to a certain amount of weight that you want to be at. Usually it's fighters when they want to fight at a certain weight, they'll cut that water down really, really severely. And then they'll pump their body back up with, with water and everything else. Because the interesting thing about that is that um, when they actually weigh in for a fight and when they actually fight, there's probably a good five to 10, sometimes even 15 pounds difference. And it's like a day, that's a day. So they will like really get themselves down. So th what this person is saying, um, oh, this person just said no hydrate bodybuilders cut down salt. Yeah, there's a lot of things that they do. I'm specifically talking about just this one thing about hydrating. So <clears throat> for me on camera, if I need to get myself to look a certain way for a very short amount of time, I will restrict my water um, <clears throat> only for a day. Um, and I will actually like get that water weight off my body to make the muscles look more sinewy. Um, I did it on Riddick. Um, I've done it on another life. Um, <clears throat> I'm not saying it's healthy. Um, but if you do it, um, in a controlled way and you're doing it so it's not constantly, um, I personally think that it's fine. Um, but I also consume a lot of water normally. I probably drink, you know, uh, almost a gallon of water a day sometimes. So, um, oh, someone said that jockeys do that too. It would make hmm. complete sense to me that jockeys would do that yeah, because it's lower their as as lowering their weight as much as possible. Um, yeah. Interesting. Um, someone just asked if I'm a Walking Dead fan or Game of Thrones. Um, I am not a Walking Dead fan. Um, sorry. I have seen The Walking Dead. Um, I just, yeah, it just wasn't my thing. Um, and then also it's really daunting to have to like start watching something when you know there's like eight seasons of it. Um, I did watch the season with Negan in it. And the reason I did that <clears throat> was um, I wanted to see what it looked like to play a villain that people liked and a villain that like was actually charming. Um, and I did that before going into The Flash because I wanted to see what Jeffrey Dean did um, to make his character sort of like this charming character even though he's like hitting people with baseball bats. Um, <clears throat> so I tried to bring a little bit of that to Amunet, um, where she's charming and funny, um, but she's also killing people. <laughs> um, oh, that's not that. oh, wait, something happened. I don't know. Skip trial. Um, someone just said, just saw that Steve released a mobile app for his training program. Have you seen it? Would you recommend it for someone who is just an intermediate lifter and not an actor training for a role? Um, so Steve Zim is my trainer. Um, Steve, like someone mentioned, just came out with a website right now. So Steve um, can actually train you. Um, I ordered it, I downloaded it. I actually worked out with it yesterday here at the house. Um, now this is his, his mobile uh, workout plan um, really requires a gym. There are some adaptations to it. I'm just learning actually, cause I haven't been on the app long enough. Um, <clears throat> it's called a tighter U mobile. So ATU mobile. Um, now, I've got a lot of equipment here, so I was able to sort of like change some of the workout and exercises to fit me at home, but you definitely do need some equipment at home if you're going to be using Steve's uh, mobile app. Um, so that being said, um, if you have the money and you have, you know, 20 to $30 a month, um, I would suggest following his plan. He's, he's got um, very 
clear workouts for you and videos explaining what each workout looks like. Um, I loved working out with it at home. Now you said you're an intermediate um, lifter. So you probably could understand a lot of the things that Steve is saying and a lot of the things that Steve is showing you. Um, and what I love about it the most is that um, uh, it gives me a clear workout. You know, I've been working out since I was a child because of swimming. Um, but one of the things that I've always had the most trouble with was formulating um, my actual workouts, you know? Like, I can go to the gym and I know leg exercises and I know arm exercises and I know ab exercises and butt exercises and back and chest and I know these, but I don't know how to put them together. Now, that's what's so great about Steve's app or Steve's mobile, it's actually not an app, it's a website, um, is that, um, he puts those workouts together for you. So for me, it was really helpful. Um, and uh, if you've got an extra $30, maybe try it for a month and see how you like it. Even if you don't keep that membership going, you could get some really great uh, workouts for a month, write those down and you know, um, just sort of rotate those on your own if that's something that you wanna do. Um, I'm really curious what your favorite role is. Um, which one? Antoine. Oh, um, as an actress, what is your favorite role? Um, I used to always joke and say the one that I had right now. <laughs> um, but I, uh, my favorite role <clears throat> is actually Amunette from The Flash. Um, I love her. I think that she's crazy. Um, she's fun to play. She's um, over the top and irreverent and feisty and insane and all of these fun things that allow me to go to work and play. Um, and I absolutely love that. Um, you know, it's not every day that you get to go to work and um, act crazy. <laughs> I mean, I do because it's sort of a prerequisite for the <laughs> characters that I play. <laughs> I can verify that you're crazy all the time. <laughs> yeah. Um, someone just said, not Starbuck. What? No, Starbuck wasn't my favorite character, you guys. Um, she wasn't. Starbuck, um, I don't think that people understand how um, heavy that role was and how depressing that role was. Um, you know, she's fun to watch. But to have to live in that place and that mindset for 22 episodes a season for five years was really hard. Um, I was depressed. I drank too much. I was lonely. I was tired. I, all of those things for me came playing Starbuck um, because it was who she was too. So um, I, I, I love that she is so much for so many people. Um, and she's awesome, and I, I love the show, and I love the character, but she's not my favorite role to play um, by any means. Um, so, um, next one. one we get a lot. Um, oh, Katie, do you make your own food? Eating healthy is so expensive, and would like to know your advice on eating healthy without spending all that money. So, <clears throat> there, there is some misconception to eating healthy. Um, a lot of times we go to the grocery store and we look at organic food and it is so much more expensive, right? I get it. I totally understand that. But it takes planning to eat healthy, okay? Um, you can go to your local farmer's market and, and in, at least if you're not buying organic, you can see the farmer, you can see the person growing your food, you can ask them what pesticides they're using, you can ask them those sort of things. So you can, farmer's markets are really important. Um, <clears throat> another thing that's really important that I tell people all the time is canned food and frozen food. So for vegetables, um, a lot of people talk about how um, eating healthy is really hard because vegetables are so expensive 
Um, but a lot of times um, when they freeze and when they can vegetables, that's at the height of their freshness. So you're actually getting the most amount of freshness, the most amount of nutrients, and they're stopping the, the process and they're holding those vegetables at that place for you. So you can get them in the freezer. You can save money on fresh vegetables in the freezer. You can save money on canned vegetables. I still actually love canned beans more than I love fresh beans because I was raised on them because they were less expensive. Um, you can do those sort of things. You can also invest in um, a, a bulk grocery store card. Um, this is one of the things that I tell people is that Costco cards and you know places like that can be really expensive and maybe that that membership doesn't fit into your budget but if you go in on that membership with a friend or maybe another family and you split that membership and you guys actually go together um one of the things that happen is that you spend time with someone that you love and that's great for your mental health but you also have at your fingertips bulk food that is then cheaper because you're buying in bulk so um that's really great to keep on on hand um but you know there are there are a lot of ways to eat healthy on a budget um you just have to get creative and you have to plan when you go to the grocery store one of the biggest problems when we go to grocery stores is we have no plan of attack and we just buy food and that's when shopping gets expensive. So um, you just might have to shop around more, but you can, I promise you, eating healthy on a budget is possible. It really is possible. I also think people undervalue how important it is to invest in your health. Even if it is a little bit more expensive, they don't think it's as important to eat healthy, but it's such a huge investment in yourself. It's true. Like it's worth it. It's true. If you think about the the health ramifications of not eating healthy now and, and the, the strain that that can actually take on your um, physical health and your mental health and your, emo I mean, it, it, your emotional health, all of those things are so important and it starts with food. It starts with the things that we put in our bodies. Um, you know, if I find that if I eat like shit, and if I'm eating processed food and if I'm drinking too much and if I'm not working out and if I'm not getting the sleep that I need and if I'm consuming too many sodas, I don't feel as good. And when I don't feel as good, I'm not motivated to work out. I'm not motivated to um, work on my relationships. I'm not motivated to memorize my dialogue and do the work that I need to do. So it all starts with food. Um, and it's so important. Mm -hmm. Cynthia Crowfoot says, pay now or pay later. And that's true. Someone just commented on my language. Am I swearing too much? I've said shit twice, now three times. That is, that's nothing <laughs> compared to how you usually talk. That's nothing. And it's not even a swear word in most countries. It's true. Um, hi, Ireland. Um, if you and Starbucks got into a fist fight, who would win? If Starbucks and I got in a fist fight, who would win? Starbucks. You guys. This is a dainty human being here. Like, I don't, I don't want to fight. I just want to love. <laughs> um, I don't know if I, I, I mean, I'm sure that I could punch somebody. I'm positive that I could punch somebody. I have enough training to punch somebody and fight. I just would be so scared. I would be so scared. Um, and Starbucks crazy. That bitch is crazy. She's depressed. She's got nothing to lose. <laughs> um, do you practice any other physical skills, martial arts, yoga? Do I practice any other physical skills, like martial arts and yoga? Um, no. I mean, yes. No. Um, I have a nice blend of, of different types of working out in my regiment. Um, so I love Pilates. I love it. It's so much fun. Most specifically, I love power Pilates, um, which is um, not as like foofy as regular Pilates, no offense. Um, but it works better for me because I love a fast pace type of thing. Um, I also love Barry's Boot Camp, which is awesome. It's a lot of running, a lot of weightlifting. I love that. Um, I, I do like yoga. Um, I, I find that I'm not as good as like slowing myself down. Um, and um, 
Uh, oh, someone just asked, what about mental health? Do you practice meditation? So meditation is something that has uh, been in my life now for five years, six years, something like that. Um, I find that meditation is actually incredibly important. It's, it's one of the things, I don't do it as much as I should anymore. Um, meditation actually, I realized that I was on like a roller coaster, you know, like I was so susceptible to outside influence throughout my day. And I found myself like emotionally just going up and down all day long. And it really wasn't healthy. Um, I was getting anxious. I was having panic attacks. Um, I really didn't feel um, calm. And I didn't feel at peace with myself at all. Um, and so I found meditation. I myself learned how to meditate through transcendental meditation. That's just me. Um, there are so many different meditation apps out there and um, meditation classes um, that you just have to find what's right for you. But I would highly recommend adding some meditation um, and just some silent practice into your daily life. Um, it's really, really important um, to inner peace and, and, and stillness. Um, of the mind, which has been very, very important for me because as you guys can tell, I'm up here a lot. <laughs> like I tend to go, 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 go. Um, and so it's really important for me to stop. Um, and meditation does that for me. So, um, recently watched your Spartan video that looks really fun. What kind of shape do you need to be in to actually do that? Working on my weight loss recently and Spartan race looks really like a fun goal. You guys, Spartan races are so much fun and I'm not like sponsored by them. They don't talk to me. <laughs> they, don't they don't talk to me. Um, they, um, they, I think they waived my entrance fee when I did it. Um, but um, other than that, um, uh, I'm not sponsored by Spartan. I just love it. Um, now, let's talk about the kind of shape that you have to be in to do a Spartan race. None. You could do a Spartan race today. You could do one today. You could walk out your house and do a Spartan race. Um, the best thing about the Spartan race for me, it might actually be good for you to go do one just to see sort of what you need to train. Um, but you can do a Spartan race with no training whatsoever because it should be fun, right? Now, if you're going out and you want to win a Spartan race, or if you want to really compete in a Spartan race, you're going to have to train. You're going to have to start doing some pull-ups. You're going to have to start working on your grip strength. You're going to have to start working on your running you're gonna have to start practicing those burpees because I promise you, you're gonna do a lot of them. <laughs> I love burpees. I've made myself love them because every time you cannot do an obstacle, you have to do burpees. 30. If you're trying to compete, if you're just doing fun and like going out for fun, if you fail at an obstacle, you don't have to do the burpees. You can just skip the obstacle and go on to the next one. You can also do Spartan races with a team, which is really cool. I've actually toyed with the idea of signing up for a Spartan race with a bunch of fans um, and running it as a team and doing it for charity. I thought that would be really fun. Um, and so you guys let me know if you think that you would like to do a Spartan race with me and um, uh, that, that could be really fun. I think that that... I would love that. But that's the thing. You could go do it tomorrow or you could train for it and do it next week. But the main things are upper body strength, running, and grip strength. Um, work on those things mm -hmm. and, and you should do you're pretty You're supposed to be able to good. run at least double the distance of the race that you're doing. Yeah. So they say that you're supposed to be able to do double the distance in running. Um, but you don't have to run it. You could walk it if you wanted to. Um, but our race, my race was three miles. So technically you should be able to run six miles without stopping um, or walk six miles without stopping. Um, but you don't need to, you don't need to try and compete at the Spartan. Um, it should be fun. And it is fun. I promise you it's a lot of fun. Um, so couple more. couple more questions. Um, Yay. 
Have I auditioned for any Marvel movies? Would be awesome to see you in the Marvel universe. I have never auditioned for a Marvel movie. I don't think. You're never in the running? I don't know. If you're in the running for a Marvel movie, they don't tell you. Mm. <laughs> like they're not. I mean, I've taken meetings at Marvel, but I've never auditioned for a Marvel movie. So um, I would love to be in a Marvel movie. Who wouldn't? I mean, come on. I, I, you know, it's right up my alley, running around and, and punching stuff and kicking stuff and jumping over stuff and shooting stuff and, you know, <laughs> it's sort of what I like to do. <laughs> you don't want to be in a just DC movie though. Um, someone just said, I've heard you mention injury to your knees before. What type of injury did you sustain and how did it happen? So, um, when I was younger, I was a swimmer and I had very flat feet. So instead of my foot looking like having an arch, how do I show this? So instead of my foot having an arch, my foot is flat. And what that did was it made my knees roll in and I was working out a lot and lifting weights cause I was so little and I was competing against girls that were so much bigger than me. Um, I was lifting a lot and I hurt my knees and uh, dislocated one of them and that's what happened. So it was not very fun. Apparently you cured someone's back pain with your dried prune advice. Cured someone's back pain with yeah. my with my dried prunes? Yeah. Um, your recommendation to eat dried prunes cured my back pain. I was having blockage in my pipes and it cleared them out. I love that. You guys. We love hearing about your block. Pipes. I love hearing about, I love talking we about do. poop. <laughs> <laughs> and periods. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. If you don't like it, I'm sorry. Um, but I think that we need to normalize this kind of stuff, right? Like how many times do we not talk about what our bodies do? And then we feel weird and we feel like um, embarrassed and we feel like it's not normal women to, especially. especially women. Like, the poop thing is a big deal. It is such a big thing to not, to, to not go to the bathroom. You know, like I talk to women that, that, that like for four days haven't gone to the bathroom. Mind blown. Now, you should always go to your doctor, make sure that there's not something serious going on. A hundred percent. I would say start with your doctor, make sure that there's not something going on. Now, if your doctor just tells you that you're constipated, um, prunes, dried prunes, it's the most amazing thing in the world. Just treat yourself like the grandpa and up. Just eat that, eat those prunes. <laughs> um, because it really helps you guys. Um, one of, you know, I think that being being blocked up can can really affect our mental health and it can affect our physical health and it can affect so many things you know you need to get that waste out and so yeah i wonder how many followers i wonder how many people stopped <laughs> watching they're like oh man she's talking about poop again i'm out this girl talks about periods and poops <laughs> i should write a little i should write a book like a children's book called periods and poops <laughs> Ah. All right, one more. One more question, you guys, and then I will leave since now we've talked about poop too much. That's actually a pretty good one to end on. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yeah. So anyway, uh, I guess we'll we might end on on poops. I don't know. <laughs> um. But uh, I'm glad that it worked for you. Um, I am so glad that, it, you know, uh, uh, talking about that as well is that, you know, I used to take laxatives to go to the bathroom, which were so unhealthy and the, the prunes really helped. So I'm glad that it's working for you guys as well um, and that your back, your, your back pain is gone. That's awesome. I love that. Um, so I am going to go now. Um, thank you guys so much for coming for this, this Sunday talk. Um, it, it makes our quarantine go faster. We've got 12 more days or 11 more days of um quarantine so you never know maybe we'll do another one next week um and continue shooting those questions out you guys because i do answer your questions on youtube and i do answer your questions on instagram and twitter and and i will get back to you guys about certain things um and also let me know if you're interested in um doing that spartan race maybe i'll reach out to spartan and tell them that i want to do a, a fan-based team um next for charity next year as soon as it's safe and covid is is uh is over um 
and we will all stand out that uh, that starting line and scream aroo, aroo, aroo. I don't even know what it means. I don't even know what it means. Yeah, but aroo. All right, guys, I'm leaving now. Thank you so much for being here. And um, stay safe, stay healthy.